There's a forgotten group of people, Governor Christie, where they were once uh, blue collar and economically aspirational, but now they're blue collar and they feel economically desperational. In your case, however, though, I see you as somebody that can come up with policies to help them. You're uh, very well liked in the blue collar community. You know, my my father-in-law, who unfortunately is no longer with us, was a huge fan of yours. President Trump is also well liked in that community. And you identified something, he identified something. There's a forgotten group of people, Governor Christie, where they were once uh, blue collar and economically aspirational, but now they're blue collar and they feel economically desperational. Um, in your case, however, though, I see you as somebody that can come up with policies to help them. President Trump has been an avatar for their anger, certainly, but he never came up with any policies to help them. So so explain to us what differentiates you and explain to us what you would do in your first 100 days in office to help these people. Well, a few things, you know, first off, Anthony, I think you're right that he's tied into their anger and that's and and that gives them some comfort, but it doesn't give them any relief. Um, in the end, we need to give them the kind of relief that they need. So what do you do? First off, you got to get inflation under control. It is the biggest invisible tax that these folks pay every time they go to a store. And the way to do that, in my view, is to bring government spending down. So in the first 100 days, you have to propose a budget that is going to bring significantly under control um, the federal budget. And that's going to be a fight with the Congress, depending upon who controls the Congress. But it's a fight that you have to have because you have to send a signal to the markets, something that you know better than I, that this inflationary period is going to go away. As that goes away, rates go down, more investment in business, more investment in job creation will help um, the middle class in this country. Second, I think that parents are incredibly frustrated about the educational system in our country, not only the college system, but the K-12 system. So one of the things I want to do very early on is propose a federal tax credit. Um, for school choice so that parents can take, send their kids to a, a parochial school, a private school, um, if they want to, and, and not have to worry about whether um, they have the wherewithal to afford it. You and I have been fortunate enough that we can make those decisions for our kids to send them to the very best place, whether it's public, private, or parochial. A lot of parents in this country don't have it. We need to give them that relief so that they can feel like, again, like our parents felt, that they were giving us an opportunity for a greater life. And they knew education was the way to do that. You went, one of, you went to one of the finest educational institutions, higher education in the country. Um, and, and so that opportunity for parents like yours to see their, their son um, go to an Ivy League school and be able to build a career off that, it takes away a lot of that anger, Anthony, that you're talking about. Um, third, I'd say that we need to fix the immigration system in the country. People need to know that the immigration system works and that it's fair, that the people who bring great value to this country are being let in based upon their merit, and that the border in, in the South is closed for two reasons. One, because it's unfair to everyone who's waiting um, in, a, in a legal way to come in. But secondly, and more importantly, um, the amount of fentanyl that's coming in over the southern border, Anthony, is, is obscene, manufactured in China, sent to the cartels in Mexico, and then brought up to this country. 110,000 overdose deaths last year. Um, it's now the leading cause of death in young men between 18 and 34 in this country. Um, I'd send the National Guard down there in the first 100 days to assist our Border Patrol officers to interdict um, that fentanyl and to try to prevent as much of it as we can from coming into the country. And I'd couple with that a much more aggressive program um, Anthony, on treatment and drug treatment in our country so that people who need the treatment can get it. We're not going to solve this problem by jailing drug addicts. Um, drug dealers definitely should go to jail, the ones who are profiting off of it. But the addicts need to get treated. It's a disease just like heart disease or cancer um, or diabetes. They need to be treated and can be treated, and uh, we need to save lives. And so those are examples of things I would try to get rolling in the first hundred days uh, to accomplish on behalf of the country. Well, it, it, you know, listen, it's, it's obviously, it's a great plan. It's great policies that I believe in, Chris. I, I, I want to ask you about the other side though, because um, you know, I'll say this rhetorically. I didn't think we were going to grow up. You and I are roughly the same age. Uh, didn't think we were going to grow up in a society that was this polarized. I sort of remember more comedy 
and get alongness, if you will, in the uh, body politic when we were growing up. Maybe that's not the case, but it certainly seemed like that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because you, you're more of a student of this than that. But how do you get your policies done in an environment like this where people are at each other's throats in Washington or on the airwaves, on cable, in the streets, on social media? How do we do it, Chris? Well, and that's one of the things I think, Anthony, that differentiates me from the other candidates. You know, our other candidates are basically red state candidates who have operated either as governors or as uh, senators um, in states that are dominated by the Republican Party. And so they, they had an easy time, for the most part, getting their policies through. Everybody agreed. That's not the atmosphere in Washington, as you know. It was not the atmosphere for eight years when I was in Trenton in the state capital in New Jersey, where I had a Democratic legislature for all eight years. So I had to learn how to use the bully pulpit, how to use public and pro private persuasion um, to bring people along to do things like we did in New Jersey, and pension uh, uh, reform against the public sector union's opposition, um, health benefit reform, again, against the, the uh, public sector union opposition, firing the Camden Police Department because they were wholly ineffective, bringing in a new police force and training them in a new way, which now has led to a 75% drop in the murder rate in the city of Camden. Um, these are the kind of things that we were able to accomplish in a bipartisan way. And so I think, one, you have somebody who knows how to do that, knows how to work with the other side to accomplish things. Secondly, I think it also is about the rhetoric you use. You know, you know me, I'm tough. I will fight and I'll throw a punch um, whenever I need to. But we need to get back in Washington, D.C. to the idea that we're all sent there for a reason. And that reason is accomplish something that makes the country better for the people who live here. And, you know, that's the kind of desire I would bring to the job is to every day look for ways that we could work together. Uh, I won't abandon my principles, um, but what I will do is not call someone who agrees with me 80% of the time my 20% enemy. Uh, they'd be my 80% friend. And that's the way you have to look at it. And that's the way I'd go about it. And I hope that by getting rid of some of this Trump-induced chaos and vitriol and this, you know, constantly looking back and whining and moaning and complaining about the way he was mistreated, that'll bring everybody's anger down. We'll still disagree, Anthony, but you remember, I think what, what, what you and I are thinking back on is times when you could sit at a dinner party or a cocktail party and disagree with people about politics, but not have it end the evening. Now you have any of that kind of disagreement. People are so on edge and so angry and feeling aggrieved that, it can end the dinner party, end the cocktail party where people just storm out and we'll talk mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. I think showing yeah. people that government can get something done will bring that temperature down.